Unless you lived on the rock for the past year, you heard about Fortnite. You probably love it or hate it. Ah, what I know about you. In Fortnite, you play as a Californian coal miner with the sole purpose of mining resources. Bricks, stones, trees, even cars, you name it. Each match you start from a flying bus with 99 other Canadian miners. I forget to find the bus driver. Then glide down to start the mining. Now when you mine resources in Fortnite, each hit plays a satisfying bounce animation. That is what we're going to recreate today. So let's jump into Unity. Be sure to change the template to any of the new rendering pipelines. Now let's create a new scene that we can play around with. Navigate to scenes, right click, create, new scene. Let's call this the um, scene. And open it. Now, before we jump into the shaders, let's stage the basic scene. So right click, create, new 3D plane. We want to scale this up, because this will act as our floor. Now the next step is to add a model. You can use any model as you wish, however I'm gonna use Pro Builder. In, in this case I will use a stair. And you know, this looks, this looks fine. So you wanna hit the little stair. If you don't know how to get Pro Builder, you basically go to Window, Package Manager, All, scroll down to Pro Builder, and hit Install. Now when you're happy with your scene, Navigate to the root folder, create a folder called shaders, right click, create shader and a PBR graph. Let's call this the bounce shader. Wanna open it up? The magic in this shader is very similar how a water shader work. Each vertex is offset by some value. In our case, that value is controlled by the distance from the vertex to the pickaxes. Therefore, we can make the bounce stronger for the closer vertices and weaker for those further away. We want to prepare the shader for vertex offsets. And a way to do that is to create a new position node, which will be in world space. We want to offset this by some, some arbitrary value. Then transform back from world space into object space and plug it into the position. The next step is to calculate the distance between the vertex position and the hit position from our pickaxe. And to do that, we can create a new distance node. We take the distance from the vertex position to our hit position. Now the hit position will be set by script, so we can add a new variable, a vector free, and call it the hit position. Now, we want to set this by script, so we don't want to expose it, but we want to set a, a nice reference. When that's done, just drag the hit position variable out, connect it to the distance. We also want to control the radius from the bounce effect. And to do that, we can take the distance and divide it by some radius. Uh, we want to control this from the inspector, so we want to create another value. This time it's going to be a float or a vector 1. And we can call this a radius. We do want to expose this one. And we can uh, set a nicer reference for that one as well. Drag the radius out. And connect it to the divide. If the distance is larger than the radius, we get a value above 1. And to fix that, we can easily create a clamp between 0 and 1 because we want a stronger bounce when the distance is smaller. We need to invert this value. And to do that, we can basically subtract 1 by this clamp value. Now, in order to animate the bounce, we need to add another variable. We go add and create another vector free. We call this the hit impact. We don't want to expose this in the inspector, but we want to give it a, another reference name. So with this value, drag it out, and we want to multiply these two. So create a new multiply node, and connect it. The hit impact variable will correspond to a direction and an animated scale. The last thing we want to do 
Let's connect our new vertex offset. Let's connect it to the add node we added before. And you're finished. Well, you can clean it up. So once you clean up, go ahead and click Save Asset. And close the window. Now create a new material. So go right click, create new material. Let's call this bounce material. Change the shader into our bounce shader. Give it the radius. I'm gonna give it three. And drag it onto the stair. Now we need a script that can respond to us hitting the stair. Select it. Go ahead and add component. Let's call this the bounce controller and create an add. Open up Visual Studio. We can start by creating a reference to our material. So go serialize field, private material, and let's call this the material. The, ne the next thing we need is the animation curve. So go serialize field, private animation curve, and let's call this the bounce animation. A quick side note, you can set these variables to public instead, however I like keeping them private, and therefore you need the serialize field. When we hit our object with the pickaxe, we want to tell the controller to do the bounce animation. So we want to create a new function, a public void bounce. And let's, let's send in a vector 3 for our hit position. We also want the a vector 3 for our hit direction. And we want a float for the impact, impact scale. Let's default this to 1. Here we can set our shader variable, so material, that's set, vector. And we call this the underscore hit position. Let's send in the hit position. We also want to say the original impact, so original impact impact equal hit direction times the impact scale and hover over alt enter and generate field each frame we want to update animation so in our update we can make a new variable called impact which will be our original impact and we multiply this by the bounce animation which we want to evaluate. Uh, and in the evaluate we need to plug in a time. So we need, we need to create a new current time. Hover over and alt, alt enter, generate field. Now we have the impact and we can use this impact um, to set a shader variable. So material dot set vector and we call this we call this one in the shader the kids impact and send the impact variable. Now we also want to update our current time because this will always be zero in this case. So go ahead and current time and add time dot delta time to it. And the last thing we want to do is reset the current time each time we call the bounce. So that we reset the animation. Current time equals zero. Jump back into Unity and drag our bounce material into the material slot and open up our animation curve. Our goal here is to create a bouncy looking curve. I'm just gonna speed up the process. Once you're happy with the curve, we can start creating the logic for the pickaxe. To close the curve down, select the main camera, we can add a component, and we call this the pick axe controller, and hit create and add, and open up Visual Studio. In the update function, we want to query whenever the left mouse button is pressed. We can do that by if input dot get mouse button down and zero for left click and if we left click we want to do swing 
pickaxe alt enter and generate method here we're going to send out a ray from the camera the first thing we need is some raycast information to store in and this is a raycast hit we call this one hit then we need a the actual ray and the ray is coming from the camera so we can do camera dot main dot screen point to ray and here we can send in our mouse position so the ray is coming from our mouse position then we need to do the physics cast and so if physics dot ray cast we send in our ray we also need to reference our ray cast hit and the distance I'm going to use 10 if our ray cast actually hits anything let's see if that is a mouse controller and we can do that by creating a new variable and call it the bounce object which will be our hit collider and the get component it will be our bounce controller so if our bounce object is not null we know that we hit the bounce object and we can safely call the bounce object dot call bounce here we can send in our position, and our position will be stored in hit dot point. Our direction will be our ray dot direction. And our impact scale, we can leave that as 1. Jump back into Unity again, and add the simple camera controller, or any camera controller for that matter. Hit play. And boom! There you have it. If you want, you can go back and tweak the animation curve or the radius for extra perfection. Now, if you come this far, you probably forgot to turn the video off. Most likely. This is my first tutorial ever, and the first in the series. I have so many ideas of games we can break down and recreate in Unity. If I continue doing this, I'll buy a real microphone that's, that doesn't sound like crap, and I can use my real voice. Have a lovely day, my beautiful race.